Okay, so today on Everyday HDR, I'm going to show you two ways to really spruce up your HDR images, and one of them is using Photomatics, and the other one is obviously going to be bringing it into Photoshop to do your sprucing up. So what I've done here is I've already processed this image to the point that I want to process it in Photomatics. Um, I'll quickly go over the settings here with you. Um, you can just watch as I scroll down on the left-hand side of the screen, if you're interested. Um, now, like I always say, these settings are only for this image. If I were to bring another set of five exposures in here, these settings may not be the right ones for it. It all depends on the dynamic range of the image going into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit process. And what we're doing is we're going to save this as soon as it's done. And then I'm going to show you something that kind of comes across accidental and this whole photomatics thing. So I want to save this to the desktop uh, just as, as that, that's fine. And then, uh, so I was going through these utilities and view and, and seeing all the things I can do after I processed an image. Um, crop, resize, rotate, sharpen. Um, none of these I, r I really liked, but um, What's interesting is if you go to process, you can go undo tone mapping and go back to the original image, or you can actually tone map it again. So I'm going to tone map it again, and it looks really uh, dramatic. It's really kind of ugly. But what we're going to do is drop down the, the saturation a little bit to tone that down, and then we're going to go ahead and process this again. Uh, usually what I do is I use the exact same setting I used before, and then drop the saturation down, because I'm look right now I'm just looking for light. I want the light. And then we're going to save this one also. It's ugly, it's grainy, it's nasty, I know. Don't worry about that. We're going to save as and to the desktop once again. I usually export everything as a 16-bit uh, TIFF now. Um, I used to do it in JPEG, but um, I realized how much information I was losing with JPEG, so I only do TIFFs anymore. So we can go ahead and exit out of Photomatics because we're done on Photomatics. And let's grab those two that we just did and bring them into Photoshop. So now, here's our ugly one, and here's our good one. So take your ugly one and bring it on top of your good one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the blending options of that ugly one. So here's the ugly one. Let's go ahead and rename that layer to Ugly Layer. When we go to our ugly layer, we go down to Luminosity, and what it does is it really just kind of pulls out the, the lights in those in that image from before pushes back the darks a little bit, pulls out the lights. And you can obviously go in here and you can reduce the fill and the opacity so that it's not quite as detrimental as it was before. And then also, I don't really like what it did to the clouds up here. It made these areas really blown out right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a layer mask on there. And I'm going to paint in very lightly at about 62%, and also very lightly with my Wacom tablet, those areas that are now blown out that shouldn't be. You see I'm just kind of bringing those details back. I'm going to go ahead and put this up to 100. And the great thing about a, a Wacom tablet or Wacom tablet, I always I don't know how you actually pronounce that, I should probably look up the pronunciation online, is that the, the lighter I press, the lighter the amount it's doing. So when I press at 50%, it's putting a 50% gray on there. If I press at 100%, it's taking 100% black. You can see that in here. Uh, there's black and then there's little gray dots. Now this does tend to get your images a little bit more noisy than they would be, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce the noise once I'm done with this too. And I really want to clean up those clouds too, so I'm going to go ahead and do that while I'm up here. So at this point I'm going to make a stamp of my layer. I'm going to press Control, Shift, Alt, E, and that's going to make a stamp. Now with this stamp, if I do any editing to the layers below it, it's not going to, nothing's going to happen to those. So what I like to do with with these is go to the layer properties and change the color to something like red or orange or yellow and that tells me that this is a stamp that if I do anything underneath this that it's not going to do anything to the image because this is the overlying layer right now 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select out um, the sky. I've got the sky pretty well selected. And maybe get the mountain range back in there a little bit. And I don't really want to get that guy back there too because I don't want to lose that. And I just reduced the brush size by pressing the left bracket button. And I just used the wrong brush. Look at that. I hate it when that happens when I'm doing a tutorial. Okay, there we go. I want to subtract that area. So give me that area back. And I get a little bit tighter. And add it back in. And then I'm going to surface blur the clouds because they're really kind of noisy. You won't, don't really see it in, in stuff that has detail, but you really see it in clouds. So I'm just going to go to surface blur. And that looks about good. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's the first way of doing the, the processing I was talking about, making your images pop a little bit more. The second way is to do a gradient overlay. So um, I've got white and black selected here. If you don't have white and black selected here, just press the default for default and go to gradient map. And now you've made a gradient map. And the cool thing about gradient maps is that if you change the opacity to luminosity, it really pushes your darks forward and your lights back. Look at it with the gradient map. I call this the gradient map insta pop because it instantly pops your images out. So that's without it, that's with it. There's something interesting you can also do with this gradient map insta pop. Um, you can also do a hue saturation um, type of gradient map insta pop. So check this out. So if I do a gradient map once, or before I do a gradient map once again, let me go ahead and select a color from this image. So I'm going to collect, select this brown area. Oh, make sure I'm on the image first. Make sure you're on the image, not on the gradient map. Select this brown area, and then do another gradient map. And you'll notice that when you do another gradient map with that color over there, it makes a gradient map of the color that you had selected before. So like I said, when you're doing the gradient map to go to grayscale, make sure you press D. That's your default color button to make it go from black to white. And then you can make a black and white gradient map. Whereas here, we've selected more of a sepia tone gradient map. And then when you go to the blending options, you select hue, and it only pops those hues out. Now, if you don't like the hue that you selected, don't worry about it because this is what you can do. Add a hue saturation la layer and make it only apply to the layer below it by pressing Alt and clicking in between. And now you can play with the hue and the saturation. And I kind of want this to be a brownish color. So it has that sepia tone look, but it's not quite sepia tone. It kind of throws the viewer off a little bit. So what I've done with this is, like always, I make actions. So check this out. Here is another M view of that hanger. If I go to my actions and I go to BW Instapop Luminosity, that's the first one I showed you. I press play and it does it. Then I go to BW Instapop Hue and it does it. Check that out. Pretty cool, huh? And if I want to change that hue, I'm on the hue saturation level layer right now. I can just move this back and forth and change that hue to give this sepia toned image a little more uh, depth than the typical sepia toned image that you see. So that's two other ways that you can spruce up your HDR images. Um, I really like that black and white insta pop. I mean, just look at how how much that pushes up, pushes your blacks back, pulls your lights out. I mean, it, it looks really good. So go ahead and experiment with that, and uh, hope you guys have fun this weekend.